in Washington, D.C. Okay, let's call our Board of Directors meeting to order. Um, Soquel Creek Water District. First item up is a roll call. Director Glaser. Here. Director LaHue. Here. Director Jaffe. Here. Director Christensen. Here. And President Daniels. Here. Next item is public hearing, of which we have none. We then go to the agent the consent agenda. Any directors wish to pull any of these items or anyone in the audience? I'd like to pull 3.1. Okay. 3.5. 3.1 and 3.5. I'm sorry, what number was that? 3.5. Any particular 3.1? 3.1, one, I just wasn't at the meeting, so I'm okay. going to right. abstain. Great. Okay, someone want to move the other consent items? I'll move approval of the others. Second. Okay, we have a motion second. Roll call, please. Director Lather? Yes. Director LaHue? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen and President Daniels? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. It works. Okay, so 3 1. I guess we, we have no other changes. I would move approval of the three ones. I'll second. Both of them? Both of them. Both of them. Lather. Yes. Director LaHue. Yes. Director Jaffe. Abstaining, I wasn't here. Okay. Director Christensen. Yes. And President Daniels. Yes. So that passes almost unanimously. Uh, three five. Okay. I, I just had several suggestions for the What's on Tap newsletter. Good. Let's get to them. Okay. So starting with the first page, I thought that it might be nice to show a photo of um, instead of just the wrecked pipe, maybe show a photo of what new pipe looks like in comparison and what we're putting what we're putting in to replace it just to show you know that kind of comparison mm -hmm. um, and on the second page um, 22 of the agenda but the second page of this um, on the left hand greenish area there's kind of an explanation update on the different water supply um, options and I thought that we might not want to assume everybody knows what Pure Water SoCal is, and explain that it's you know a recharge project of advanced purified water. Mm -hmm. um, just just to you know make sure we don't just assume everyone knows that. Right, um, and that its purpose is to s stop seawater intrusion. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I meant. Just an explanation of that brief explanation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and all then down under um, desalination, private company needs a space between it. Um, and then we might want to put when the EIR is expected, even though I know that dates kept moving, it might be an update. There was an article in the paper just uh, last week that says it's either going to be the end of the year or early next year. I just think it'd be worthwhile having that in there. Um, then on the finance article, on the second paragraph, about five lines down, instead of developers, I think we should put customers. Um, small amount of we collect from customers putting in new homes or subdivision. I mean, these are individual people, right. um, not all large developers. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of them are just single family homes. Um, we don't have very many big developments here. Um, and on the next paragraph on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh line, seventh line, I, I just thought instead of but for the district, I just said for our district might be just clarify. Um, and then at the very bottom of that article, it's um, something about, I thought we should have something in that last paragraph about that, that the reason we have this consultant and we have to go through this process, we have to be sure all the rates are fair and reflect the actual costs. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's, we, you know, it, it's not like we just pick rates. They have to be really well researched and and justified. and justified. 
So I think that, that as long as we're explaining finances, I well figure we might as well explain that. All right, next page. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's just good. Um, Thank you. These are good. The free WaterWise house calls. This is more just a formatting issue. Um, on the little first paragraph, it, it says, includes a thorough irrigation system assessment to, and then there's about five bullets. The last two aren't really anything to do with irrigation. So um, might want to just be includes and then have if a bullet for irrigation assessment. and then put sub bullets for the irrigation items and then toilets and shower heads as a separate bullet. You think maybe if we just say a thorough assessment too and then. Yeah. Okay. That's all just, you know, since it put it under the heading of. Um, and then my, I think this is my last one on the last page under consumer covenants water quality report. Um, uh, it says, in 2017, we continue to water. We continue to meet. <laughs> so we need to get rid of the word water. Mm -hmm. And I said, I would say meet or exceed all safety and water quality standards. Because most of the time we're not just right at the issue. We, we're like, there's no, no de non-detect for a lot of things. That is all. Bruce? I just had a question about the picture there though what, what was the picture for the uh yeah there's no picture. landscape beautification We're, we wrote this and submitted <laughs> this a question <laughs> yeah so we'll, by day he was there and has taken some pictures so we'll put a picture use your imagination yeah, all i did is but it was just uh, so yeah. it wasn't a correction it was a question yeah, yeah. it happened on saturday uh -huh. yeah exactly oh got it just a minor thing on uh, page two of the what's on tap, page 22 of the agenda. There's uh, the second paragraph, I think it is, starts off with the district's sole source of revenue comes from money collected from rate payers for water service. And then it says we also have, so can't have a sole source and also. So just Pri that needs primary to maybe? Primary, primary sounds good. Yeah, primary. Major, major. largest. Vast majority, <laughs> something. And then, and then, kind of al along those same lines, is a little awkward. Down in the paragraph below, it says, "But for the district, money collected almost entirely from water rates is what enables us to provide reliable." Okay. There may be just reword we that, reword that, that yeah. instead of collected, but mm -hmm. the m the revenues from water rates. I I mean that I I get the. I, get, I think we I get what the, the the thought is that that gives us stability. But just that's all I have. Okay. All right. I don't think we need to approve this. This is just a right. comment by the. We will incorporate those changes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So where do we stand? Oral communications. Unless we're doing the presentations so uh, first. No, we're not. Uh, come on. Oral communications, right. So this is the time for us to address us on any item not on tonight's agenda. So if you wish to speak to us about something, this is the time. Good evening. My name is Christina Cuevas. I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of Cabrillo College. And I'm here tonight to introduce our new President Superintendent of Cabrillo. Dr. M Matthew Wettstein. He comes to Cabrillo and Santa Cruz County as the former assistant superintendent and vice president of instruction and planning at San Joaquin Delta College in Stockton, California. There, he led and participated in research and funding and institutional grants totaling $8 million. Prior to that, Matt served as the interim dean of the San Joaquin Delta College Agriculture, Science, and Math Division and before that, he was the Dean of Planning, Research, and Institutional Effectiveness for five years. He has, uh, he has received a PhD in Political Science and an MA in Political Science from Northern Illinois University, and he holds a BA in Political Science in uh, from the University of St. Francis and Joliet University, I Illinois. We, the whole board and the faculty and the staff of 
uh, Cabrillo College are really thrilled to have Matt Westin as our leader, and I'm proud to introduce him as our new president and superintendent. Matt? Thank you, Christine. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to join the um, community. I've already met uh, several of you. Uh, we had a wonderful presentation um, in my office uh, uh, about a month ago with Ron and staff talking about the pilot uh, project for um, the injection well to prevent the seawater intrusion. Um, wonderful presentation in our Board of Trustees last week to uh, discuss that project with our Board of Trustees as well. So I appreciate Dr. Daniels and Ron for their appearance at our meeting. Um, I pledge to do anything that we can as a college to be a good partner for the, the water district and obviously save as much water as we can as we're watering and using resources. But if there's any way that we can partner on that particular project, I'd like to see the college involved in, in solving these kind of regional problems rather than being a part of them. Uh, and so um, we look forward to working with the staff on further issues related to that. And just wanted to extend my um, thanks for being a part of this community. I hope to meet many of you outside in other uh, venues. I'll leave my business card with you if you ever want to get in touch with me about college uh, matters or things related to the water district. Please feel free to contact me. So thank you so much. Thank That's you great. for coming. Thank you. thank you. Thanks for your support. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address us? See no one, bring it back. Um, we why don't we skip over the reports and the will serves and go right to 6.2, the presentation of Monterey Bay area-wide Save Water Video Contest Awards. Right. So do we have uh, anything from the staff on this? Yeah. Do you want to uh, I will read this. It? Yeah. Okay, this is uh, the fourth annual student-made video contest this year, and it was organized and sponsored by Soquel Creek Water District in partnership the with the Water Conservation Coalition of Santa Cruz and the Water Awareness Committee of Monterey County, making it a Monterey Bay area-wide contest. The contest goal was to create high-quality videos to encourage people to save and protect water. The suggested categories were inspire residents and or businesses to take one specific action that conserves water or prevents pollution to our water supply, or tell a story about a resident or business that has taken action to conserve our water resources or prevent water pollution, or create a visual representation of how much water is saved by taking a specific <coughs> water conservation action. Local high school video production classes offered through the Santa Cruz County Career and Technical Training Program and other video production classes for high school and college students in Monterey and Santa Cruz County were invited to submit short public service announcements in English or Spanish. Some classes received presentations from staff about water conservation and water pollution prevention. Several teachers made the video project a class assignment for credit. More than 50 videos were submitted from schools in the Monterey Bay area. Over 130 students learned about how to save water and participated in creating the videos. Once a water conservation staff and water committee me members were invited to judge the videos. Judges were impressed by the creativity and wide variety of water conservation and pollution prevention topics that were covered in the video. So we will now show you the videos. All right, so these are the winning eight videos. Tenemos un jardín que amamos a cuidar a diario. La boquilla de manguera tiene muchos modos para diferentes cosas. Es una forma sencilla y económica que no solo ayuda a mantener nuestros jardines vivos, sino que también ayuda a conservar el agua. Haz la diferencia y ayuda a nuestra comunidad. 
día puede ser difícil entender por qué el conservar agua es importante. El desperdicio de agua es valioso para el buen ambiente. El desperdicio de agua empieza con una gota a acabar con una sequía. Es fácil conservar agua. 1. Cierra bien la llave cuando te lavas las manos. 2. Si llueve, colecta agua y puedes regar tus plantas cuando sea necesario. 3. Pon un rociador a tu manguera cuando riegues tus plantas. To me, I'm the water flow expert. Can't you clearly see we'll be living in a desert? Shorter showers, that's the way to go. Don't flood the flowers, save the H2O. When it comes to flushing, there's some rules you should follow. If it's brown, flush it down. If it's yellow, let it mellow. The tap's been dripping all week. Place a bit for it to go in. Utilizing leaks like my name is Edward Snowden. shower with a high pressure shower head, you can use up to 37 and a half gallons of water. If you buy a five minute shower timer and switch to a low pressure shower head, you can save up to 30 gallons of water per shower. That means if 100 people did this, they can save nearly 30,000 gallons of water a day. Visit SaveOurWater.com to learn more about how you can be a part of preserving California's precious water. A gallon of water is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to cook, to clean, to garden, and to do a whole lot of other things. That means that the average American family wastes 180 opportunities per week. So don't waste yours. You can save water by doing things like using a shower bucket, not watering your plants before, after, and when it is raining, turning off the tap when you're not using it, and collecting rainwater. Who knows what you could do with all the gallons of water you'll save. going to present the awards to the students. The winning videos and awards were chosen for their video quality, entertainment value, and ability to educate the viewer about saving water. The top six winning teams share $500 for each team. Wasting Water Drives Me Crazy by Katie Small from Cabrillo College. Conservamos Agua by Udalas Dominguez Rocio Morales from Aptos High School. Conservando Agua by Trina Dying and Carmen Garcia from Aptos High School, Easy Ways to Save Water by Matthew Beale from Aptos High School, Water Wrap by Jackson Moore from Cabrillo College, Conserve Tons of Water with a Simple Trick by Ben Hablett, Emily Carrillo, and Jordan Broxton from Aptos High School. So if the students who won uh, want to come up uh, for a photo opportunity, come on up and we'll, uh, the, the ones who gave me your address and uh, we were able to um, cut you a check, we'll be able to give you your check tonight. And so come on up for a photo opportunity with our board of directors. So an individual opportunity in a group? Yeah. <laughs> so this is Jackson Moore. Now he's at Cabrillo College, right? Thank you for your great wrap, water wrap. <laughs>
Yes, I think we should all come up here for a photo. Everyone together with the board of directors here. Can I have the board of directors? Get everybody. Yeah. Yeah, come up to a photo, please. Ben, how about? Ben is not here. Okay, yeah. If I talk in the microphone, then I'll be recorded, so it'll be better. I'll, I want to recognize also that your teacher, uh, Joel uh, Domhoff. Uh, he, his class has submitted the most amount of videos, so I really appreciate your uh, support of the contest. And uh, come up, too. You're in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> come on up. And then, um, is oh, are there any other teachers in the? Are there any, any other teachers here? I don't recognize you by your face, so I don't know. All right. Well, thank you to all the teachers who supported the contest as well. All right. Let's take a photo together. Squeeze in just a little bit. Uh, can, we, can we all sit in there? Yeah. All right. Congratulations, everybody. All right. Off the camera. You guys do. That. <laughs> Thank you for all your efforts. So where it goes from here is your videos will be on TV on two different three different stations. Oh, oh and the oh I'm sorry, the runners up was Holden Barker from Aptos High. Dasari Beltes Belt Belesteros. It's Zuri Gonzalez and Luis Ceballos. Um, so after this, your videos will be on TV, and they're going in on K, um, KSBW, uh, KION, and the Community Television of Santa Cruz County. And they'll, they'll also be on our websites. And the Water Conservation Coalition and the Monterey County Water Awareness Committee represent agencies from m many, from uh, water agencies all over Santa Cruz County, as well as Monterey County. And so they're, all of the people who voted were all water conservation specialists and uh, water managers uh, who are involved in the water conservation outreach um, for their agencies. So they really appreciated your really fine work. And it was really hard to only choose eight because there's some really great ones and from your classmates. So I hope that they feel appreciated too. But you guys the did a really great shown, job. The videos will be shown at three of the movie theaters as well. Oh, yes. And they'll be shown at three movie theaters, uh, the Cinema 9 downtown, Riverfront Theater, and um, one other one. Uh, on the paper there. On the paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the, uh, the Green Valley Cinema in Watsonville. Right. Yeah, so good job, everybody. You did a great job. Yeah. We're, gonna meet out, we're gonna meet outside for a photo with everybody, okay? You don't have to stay for the whole meeting, it's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone gets that award. <laughs> Turn out. Okay, let's go back to 5.1. The uh, 
board calendar. Yeah, I'll report out on a couple items. Um, so this coming Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. at Simkin Center is the MGA, McCounty Groundwater Agency meeting. Uh, the primary item on there is related to the approval of the budget, the next year's budget. So um, it's approximately about 1.3 million. Uh, much of that will be covered by the $1.5 million grant that we received, though, to help develop the groundwater sustainability plan. Then on Wednesday, May 23rd, the following week, is the Groundwater Sustainability Plan uh, Advisory Committee meeting. Um, I will be not attending that. I'll be in Washington, D.C., but I believe Bruce Jaffe, well, Dr. Jaffe, will be attending. Okay. Good. And then I'll just make note um, that on May 21st is the Water Rates Advisory Committee from 3.30 to 5, and I know one of the committee members, uh, President Daniels, won't be there, so hopefully the alternate um, Director Lather might be able to attend or by phone, and we can follow up on that. Um, that's all I have to report out about the calendar. Um, Any questions? Or I just wanted to remind the board that the next meeting on June 5th is going to be at Community Foundation. Okay. okay. Thank you. And I'll just, um, the July meeting, I might have to teleconference in. I'm okay. not sure yet. Okay. Okay. So we go to 5.2, the special board assignments. Yeah, I really won't report much out except to note that we added the items in red underline. Um, I think they were from the previous meeting. There were several, about three or four items that the board directed staff to um, look at in the future. So those, those have been added to the list. And, uh, and one marked off, always like that. <laughs> Any questions about these? I do not. All right, 5.3, organization-wide abbreviated status update. Yeah, does staff want to come up and... Uh, For conservation and customer service field, I don't have much to add. If, are there any questions about the items reported? Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask about the AMI, uh, the meter system, the trans, you know, transfer, because it said that the shipment of the hybrid meters is dependent on the master meters completion of the licensing and so on. So is that... Going it's going um, they're probably about a week out from finishing the propagation the radio frequency propagation study that has to be completed before they can apply for the licensing through the um, Federal Communications Commission and that's only supposed to take about a month and so we're we're pushing them um, I think they are a little short staffed but we are pushing them to get expedite our our project so we'll keep keep pushing and yeah not let up can you take them and install them without activating them you can install them and read them as drive-by automated meter reading systems without the collector stations in place so we can um, but they, they have to be programmed before they can be shipped from the factory, and they can't be programmed t and shipped until they're licensed. And so we have our order in, and we're waiting on those the propagation study and the licensing, and then they'll ship those, and we'll likely read them in the drive-by mode until we can get the collector station placed for that area. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give a rough idea of what what that meant actually yeah <laughs> so. and we'll be bringing that item back um, I we're shooting for the first meeting in June to bring it back as um, uh, offset potential offset generating project under the water demand offset program um, and then along with that there will probably uh, be an update of where things are and our plans for moving forward so okay. I had another I had a question though about what it meant the third bullet down on the, the 30 day notice to the city and the county, mm -hmm. the city of Capitola and the county about uh, conclusion of the retrofit. What did that mean? We, we've been enforcing the um, city of Capitola's ordinance and the county of Santa Cruz's ordinance that um, 
require fixtures to meet minimum efficiency standards anytime a property is sold. And because we've been doing that program for so long, we've achieved so many of the retrofits. We were seeing very few um, uh, homes or properties that were not in compliance. And it, it takes a significant amount of staff time to administer that program. So we came to you last month and said, we think we've worked ourselves out of this job, basically. And um, you agreed. And so we, um, because those those local agencies have ordinances on the books. Um, we've given them a formal notice that we're terminating the program. Um, and so they've been working on what they're going to do instead. And in fact, the city of Capitola just had a meeting last week to revise their ordinance to um, basically um, say that the program will not be continued in within the areas of the city served by Soquel Creek Water District. They'll continue to do it for the 10% of their um, their area that's served by the uh, uh, city of Santa Cruz for a couple more years. But we explained to them that through this program itself, our rebates that we've had in place since 1997 and thousands of retrofits through our water demand offset program. There's just not a lot more out there to be done based on the current standards and there's also point of sale, um, California point of sale um, restrictions on fixtures um, and people are, you know, when they're redoing their bathrooms or whatever, they're held to the California Green Building Code requirements. And so there's also those kind of passive things that have resulted in a lot of fixtures being retrofit, so. I'll just add that that was, we actually, uh, the city and the county both gave us the authority, signed it over us so we could, could do that. So a long time ago, the board realized we had better resources and uh, a better reason, I guess, to uh, take care of it. And so we did, now we're telling we, We've done the job. I just wanted to hear what they were going to do <laughs> in response. But it sounds like they've got, they're making plans. And the county is, is going to continue with the program. And they um, they administer the program. It's, it's kind of a, uh, they don't enforce it actively like we've, we've been doing. Um, what do you call that when somebody's on their own? A trust system or honor system. So they'll absorb the portion of the service area back into their program that they administer countywide. So. Okay. Thanks. Engineering, please. Good evening. Um, uh, the first bullet is something I want to expand on that we are wrapping up the bench scale testing for the water purchase between Santa Cruz Water Department and, and us. Um, preliminary results are promising, but uh, we're waiting for the final uh, weeks of data to come in, and we've scheduled a presentation to the board on July 17th. So I hope we can look forward to getting that uh, final report and presentation. Great. Any uh, follow-up questions on that, I can answer them. Also, um, we did put the Cornwell tank uh, back in service, so it's Great. fully functioning and providing fire protection, et cetera, to our sub area one. Ready for summer. Um, and then I think I'll cover one item for O&M. Um, unfortunately, last week we did discover that our main street well, which is one of our main producers in sub area one, likely has another hole in the well casing. Mm -hmm. uh, we discovered uh, several, well, we lost 30 feet of gravel pack and it ended up going through the pump and into the um, reaction tank. So we'll be, it is offline now. We'll be pulling the pump and doing a video to see um, what we have to do. If, if you recall, a couple years ago, we did do a whole rehab on that well and had a hole and we patched it in two locations and um, likely to be another problem. This is one of those wells where it's a hybrid of um, plain st carbon steel and stainless steel. And so the, obviously the non-stainless steel does not last as, as long as stainless steel. So we will be assessing that and coming back to the board. Now this is unfortunately not included in the budget, but uh, we would come to you for OCR mm -hmm. to address that I in a timely manner. We don't, we're going into peak season and 
we'll do what we can, but we'll keep you informed. Thank you. Any other questions? Questions? Yep, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Finance. Or special projects. Oh, I'm sorry, special projects. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, getting that. Yeah. I just wanted to report on two things, and then if you have questions. Um, the big news in the last time we presented to the board is that we have done the startup and commissioning of the tertiary pilot plant that was part of the Bureau of Reclamation's Title 16 grant that we received. So that pilot plant is down at the Santa Cruz Wastewater Treatment Facility. Uh, Carollo Engineers, City of Santa Cruz Public Works staff, and Eileen, who is our assistant engineer, um, have been working on getting that started. It's kind of a soft start. In the last two weeks, we've just been connecting it, getting it to the source water, doing some troubleshooting, setting up all of the SCADA and telemetry so that um, we can do t uh, kind of remote uh, monitoring of it uh, as well as we have uh, daily field checks on it. That pilot plant effort uh, was based on some recommendations that came out of the National Water Research Institute's recommendations when that panel uh, you know, recognized that the source water, which is the city of Santa Cruz's uh, wastewater treatment plant, is a trickling filter system. So to get more information, understand the type of design criteria for the MFUF system, uh, they did suggest that we do the pilot testing. So we have a pilot unit. It has uh, three different skids on there. Two are ultrafiltration, and one is a ceramic uh, system. We'll be running that for 12 weeks uh, fin once we finish getting the startup complete and we'll be putting out a press release letting the public know uh, the city of Santa Cruz has been great to work with in terms of uh, helping us troubleshoot and just kind of collaborating on the project together. And so we'll, we, they are interested just as we are is to get some um, education and outreach on it. The second item is the obviously the um, environmental impact report, which we've been working on for the last two years. Uh, we're going through uh, the review of the second admin draft, and we are looking towards the release of that public document at the end of June. Any questions? No date set. Yeah, um, so the tertiary treatment pilot plant project, they're gonna be analyzing for, I'm assuming, multiple different things over the course of the whole 12 week period and then, and then kind of comparing the different treatments to see what's most effective and what kind of other issues right. we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at in, in for a lot of the purification facilities, what they say is, you know, you can do a lot of it based on no knowledge of, yeah. of the water quality, except for the component of source water. Everybody's source water is different. You know, okay. Santa Cruz's wastewater treatment plant, the technology is different. Um, and you know the kind of effluent that they get is different compared to like Southern California. So this is the kind of the missing component in terms of some of the design if you're really trying to get it based on not looking at other design criteria and then plopping it in and going, this is about the best guess versus where we can do some refinement. So they're doing a lot of source water characterization as well as so the effluent treatment. from secondary will be the influent for this. That's right. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And because one of our options with the Pure Water SoCal project is to do tertiary there at the plant, um, it is something that they're interested in because we can split or bifurcate that treatment plant to be a full purification where on one satellite site we have MF, UF, ROU, VAOP, the whole treatment train, or we could just do the tertiary, which is the MF portion, and then the, the ROU, VAOP, either at West Elsewhere. Annex or Shanna Clear. Right. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Finance, do we have anything to say about that? Yeah, I'll just mention, um, Leslie's not able to join us tonight, but there is a, a board workshop scheduled for June 19th. It's not shown on the calendar. Uh, Karen, do you, is that gonna be an earlier meeting? Like we done? It starts at five. Starts at five. five. Six. So we'll get that noted. That'd be Raffatellis coming back and uh, continuing on with that process. Um, and also in conjunction with that, there's several water rates advisory committee meetings that have been scheduled in May, June, July. So those of you on that have probably received a, um, an email. And then um, uh, as clockwork is, uh, the auditors are in our office um, are getting ready too soon here to do the interim annual audit. Questions? June 19th, is, is budget at 5 p.m.? Okay. Five to six. 
Human Resources. Um, good evening. I wanted to say thanks to Carla and uh, to those of you who weren't able to make it uh, to our employee breakfast that we had on Friday morning. It really is always a fun event when we get together. There was some fun and games to be had uh, in the morning, and it really is an opportunity for us to celebrate the great work that our staff does, um, especially in line with the a public service employees recognition week that um, officially took place last week. So we, we did have a number of activities and and um, we always love when the board shows up and gives their thanks too, so thanks. Um, I also want to, for the board as well as those folks walk, watching at home, um, to make that formal announcement that we do currently have a recruitment that's posted on our website. We are seeking a construction and maintenance worker one, two, and so if anyone's interested in that, uh, please take a look at our website, and the application uh, deadline closes on May 28th. Thank you. Questions? Nope. nope. Uh, okay, general manager. Yeah, so I'll, I'm just gonna uh, reiterate what's up there, because I think it's important. So the Public Policy Institute of California, PPIC, came out with a report uh, along the lines, something we're doing, of course, it's a much grander scale, and that's replenishing uh, groundwater in the San Joaquin Valley. You know, they have huge, they're also a critically overdrafted basin like us. So it just highlights the opportunities for surface water and groundwater agencies to collaborate much in the same vein that we're aiming to do and uh, have an MOU with the city of Santa Cruz. So a uh, little validation there. And then uh, I thought this was interesting. The California Municipal Water Agencies were surveyed and determined that 77% of the California public water agencies indicate they're going to, um, they intend on going to indirect potable reuse, which is the project, of course, that Pure Water SoCal is evaluating. So, and then um, along those lines, the State Resources, wa Resources uh, Control Board, as you see up there, has announced that. Um, uh, the, the proposed frame, framework for regulate, regulating direct potable reuse. So this is purifying the water and putting it directly back into the pipe opposed to um, what we plan to do, purify it and then re create a seawater barrier. But it's up and uh, open for uh, public review and I input. So you can see along those lines, um, water in every which way from surface water to groundwater exchanges to potable direct and indirect is really Oops. starting to take hold. Thank you, questions? Okay. We move to 6.1, conditional. District Council. Oh, yes, all right, District Council. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Thursday is uh, still on for the John Cole hearing, so we'll have a report back for you on June 5th. We won't get a tentative ruling until tomorrow afternoon at three, so. We'll have an idea of where the judge is going at that point. And then the hearing is on Thursday morning at 8.30. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing is that, that I attended ACWA on Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday of last week. Uh, the one in the afternoon was a lot about uh, the state water resources, uh, new regulations on conservation and the conflicts going over those, most of which you're already incorporating, so it doesn't really make too much difference. But the morning was interesting, which was a um, review by the people involved, the county council and the water district attorneys of both the Santa Rosa fire and post consequences and the Montecito mudslides and fire. Uh, and what the lesson that came back, and I've talked to Ron about this, is that we really need to look hard at, at our emergency policies an emergency proclamation templates because the ability to move fast in those situations is critical and you have to have some overriding things that the board would have to adopt so that you could do that and move that way but uh, they thought that was the biggest lesson they learned because they didn't have all those things in place yeah. and it caused a lot of delay and problems yeah. so it was worthwhile so I think that's a good thing for us to do in the future yeah we've started the ball rolling right. on that mm -hmm. Right. Now we do the conditional, unconditional will serves. Hi, there are three will serves for you uh, to consider tonight. There are two renewals, single family uh, residences. And the third one, uh, unfortunately, w the came to us sort of after the fact. It was one of those that went through the county and um, 
this is the first time I believe you're seeing it. It's um, an expansion of the Resurrection Church there at State Park and Soquel Drive. Um, we did verify w with that project that it it obtained its um, uh, development permit prior to the date that we set for qualifying into the old WDO program, and so they've met those requirements uh, for 0.43 acre feet of offset. Um, and so they're ready, asking for uh, unconditional approval to move forward with that. Any questions? Yeah. So the policy on renewals, is it unlimited number of renewals or how, how no, long? No, one renewal. One renewal. One, renewal. one two-year renewal. Yep. Okay. That's correct. All right. And anyone in the audience wish to address us on this item? I'll move okay. approval of the three. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director Lather. Might not be there. Director Lather. Rochelle. Sounds like not. Sorry, I'm here. Okay. 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 I don't know how to push the button. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Director LaHue? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. President Daniel? No. So that passes. So we go on to um, point one. Is that right? No. Point three. Point eight. eight. What am I doing there? Point three. Barry had six two. Six yep. Six point three. It's, yes. Six point three because we did six point two. Bond issues. Consider support and adoption of Resolution 1811 for two California water bond ballot measures. Uh, so I'll, oh, I'll go ahead and introduce this item just real quickly. Um, California does have two water bonds um, up for the public vote this year, one in June and one in November. We have Mateo Crow here from the Natural Heritage Institute who is working a lot on getting information out about the proposed bond in November, but he would like and is available to talk on both since one is sponsored by the state and one is a citizen's initiative. Um, what we have for the board's consideration tonight is uh, one, just to, to listen and learn and answer questions from Mateo, as well as if the board um, would like to consider passing a resolution in support of these two uh, bonds. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Uh, as Melanie indicated, I am here uh, working on the November water bond, which has now qualified, uh, but I do a lot of work with Prop 68, and so I'm pretty familiar with that, so I can answer the questions on the content on that and uh, in relation to our measure as well. So as Melanie indicated, um, there are two water bonds on the ballot this year. California passes water bonds fairly regularly at the state level. There have been about 22, I believe, in the last 45 years. Uh, 21 of them have passed. Uh, one failed when it had 11 competing bonds on the ballot. So the state of California's voters are generally quite positive about them. And these water bonds are really the state's main mechanism for funding a lot of the grant programs for I'll say for conservation, local water agencies, other public agencies, um, a lot of different stuff. And so the most recent water bond, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with, is was Prop 1 in 2014. It's been in the news a lot uh, due to the storage projects on it that have been maybe going to get funding, maybe not going to get funding. Um, aside from that surface storage allocation, most of Prop 1 has been allocated, uh, and we estimate, or I should say we, uh, DWR, uh, estimates that it will probably be sometime mid towards the end of next year that all of Prop 1 will be allocated. So it is kind of coming up in the timeline for another water bond. So as Melanie mentioned, Prop 68 is coming up in just a few weeks on the June ballot. It was sponsored by Senator De Leon and Assemblyman Garcia, I believe. It is a parks and water bond, so components of both, totaling 4.1 billion. There is about 1.5 billion of that funding actually going towards water. There's about a billion and a half going towards parks and other open space. And the remainder is going towards climate resiliency, some of the state conservancies, uh, a number of different areas. Uh, so it is a uh, great bond measure. Aqua has endorsed it. Um, our campaign obviously has is not completely related to it. We do share some backers in the conservation community, uh, but it is a separate measure. And the November water bond kind of came about 
uh, actually because Prop 68 was developed as a parks and water bond, and water was a little bit thrown into it, I'm not going to say at the last minute, but it was definitely put in there by the acknowledgement of a lot of the Prop 68 people that, you know, water is popular among voters. Parks, just on the basis of the topic, isn't quite as much so. And so the billion and a half going towards water is about a third of that is flood control. Um, 200 million is going to the Salton Sea. Uh, there's some funding for the conservancies. There's a little bit of funding, about 80 million, I believe, for groundwater. Um, there's some funding for, a little bit of funding for stormwater. And I believe those are the, and safe drinking water, of course, uh, is 250 million is the other main component of that. So our bond, the November water bond, uh, overlaps with that on a number of those areas. Our bill also includes salt and sea funding, safe drinking water funding, flood control, uh, stormwater, and uh, groundwater, but often to a much larger degree because the November water bond is focused exclusively on water. Uh, so it was developed kind of with a broader coalition, I would say. So conservation, ag, water agencies, and um, the environmental justice community, I guess, as well. Uh, it was actually the first water bond that Aqua has endorsed before we qualified. But as I mentioned, we did get qualified by the Secretary of State on April 25th. So at this stage, we're just waiting to get our proposition number, which is going to happen on June 28th. Um, and so the November water bond includes a lot of funding of interest to local water agencies. And I would argue, of course, I'm probably a little biased, but it is an improvement for uh, smaller water districts on Prop 1, just in that a lot of the, actually the main storage projects uh, related to Prop 1 had to have benefits to the Delta, which does not really benefit the Central Coast at all. Uh, and this is something I'm from Monterey County uh, that I've run into quite a bit. And so this bond measure provides a lot more funding towards state grant programs, um, which are going to go towards smaller projects. So there's funding for wastewater recycling, stormwater, urban and agricultural water conservation, uh, flood control, as I mentioned. And the big change from uh, both Prop 68 and from Prop 1 is uh, Sigma funding. So this bill includes $675 million for Sigma. Prop 1 included about 80 or $85 million, I believe. And uh, actually, the local agencies around here have done quite well on that. I believe you guys have gotten a grant. Pajaro Valley has gotten a grant contingent upon them failing with their alternative plan. Uh, Marina Coast got a grant. The Salinas Valley got a grant. Uh, as I'm sure you guys know, this area, the Central Coast and the South San Joaquin are kind of the two serious overdraft areas. So this funding would go towards the development of uh, groundwater strategies, towards recharge projects, feasibility studies, environmental compliance, basically all the elements that GSAs are pursuing. Um, and as you guys know, Sigma was kind of put in as an unfunded mandate from the state. And so because it was passed in 2014, Prop 1 was able to get a little bit in there. But Prop 1 started being written about 2008 or so. Uh, so it was a little behind on that mark. So this will provide the first kind of big injection into that. Um, and this is very popular among local agencies. Um, Aqua has been a big supporter of this. And a lot of the, I think the GSAs that are on critically overdrafted or moderately overdrafted basins um, are at priority to receive that. Also basins that are facing saltwater intrusion. Uh, so I'd say the Mid-County GSA is very well poised to uh, receive this kind of grant funding, especially given that they got grant funding uh, from the past much smaller pool. And DWR is, as far as I'm aware, going to try to spread that money out. So I am here um, because Aqua has endorsed our measure, Northern California Water Association, Southern California Water Coalition. In this area, Pajaro Valley Water Management Agency, uh, Scotts Valley Water District. Um, and I'd like to request the SoCal Creek Water District's endorsement as well. The water districts are actually the best way we can speak with voters. Obviously, you know, environmental groups, um, civic groups of other types are crucial to our success and their dissemination of information to their uh, constituent members, I guess. Um, but people really do look to their water district on, on these water bonds, um, which is probably a good thing. Uh, they trust the people actually supplying their water. And so I'd like to open it up to uh, the board and staff uh, for questions on our measure 68 or the relation, anything of that sort. Questions? Anyone? Okay. I was actually what, uh, wondering how this overlap with Prop 1, actually. How this would what? Uh, how the November bond um, overlaps, like, so expanded, expanded funding for the Sigma impl implementation, I guess, for sure. But So this was done. 
it overlaps, I'd say, on a lot of the main water, what I call water supply programs. So, you know, wastewater recycling was included in, uh, in Prop 1, like safe drinking water, uh, storm water, a lot of these problems or programs that are popular with water agencies. The big difference, as I mentioned, the lack of surface storage funding. The other main difference is that uh, this funding is not done through IRWM networks. So there is a $5 million grant in the bill to continue the IRWM program um, so that it continues to operate for the next number of years. But neither this bill nor 68 puts specific money towards IRWM. So that's the main couple of differences. And the canal improvements? <laughs> Can I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, as an alternative, I guess, to uh, surface storage, the we have infrastructure repair funding. So it's only about a third of what even the surface storage funding in Prop 1 was, but it would go towards canal improvements in the Central Valley and uh, dam flood, uh, the flood spill improvements on the Orville Dam. Um, so those are technically Orville the state water project. Um, the Frank Kern Canal is a federal project. Technically, the federal government uh, is supposedly going to cover both of them. FEMA has now come out that they're not going to fund Orville, it looks like. Uh, so this funding is actually not going to be enough. I think they're looking at closer to an 800 or $850 million bill. Um, and it's the same thing, Bureau of Reclamation, a federal government should be covering uh, the Fry and Kern Canal repairs, which the Fry and Kern Canal is primarily used for groundwater recharge. Um, Ron spoke about the groundwater problems out in the San Joaquin, and that's really what the canal does. Uh, it's been about 25 years since the federal government has stepped in on a major water project. And with the current administration's relationship with California, I can almost 100% guarantee it's not gonna happen. I think one thing to note about Prop 1, which is, you know, we're kind of living in it right now, is we're really trying to pursue some money under a Prop 1 groundwater grant program. Um, with when, that, when that was passed in 2014, uh, the state was, was had in their, their guidelines or in, in that bond measure that it had to be spent and liquidated by 2021. So there's that kind of sunset on that, and there's a lot of projects that are out there that need funding. So this, I think, adds on. And, in, and the way that Aqua is really framing these two bonds is that they're complementary, um, not competing. And I think that's a, a, a big distinction that we're trying to get when people call us at, at the district office and ask us about these. Because Proposition 68 is great, but it has such small amounts to really effectively get things done statewide, especially as we know, because we're a small agency, these larger water agencies can gobble up, you know, uh, Fifty million dollars for Sigma statewide is not a lot, and that's why I think the November one is coming through with six hundred and forty million. Yeah, and just to add on to that, um, Prop sixty eight is kind of at a very different stage of the campaign. They're three and a half weeks out, and so they're, I imagine that the water district's actually getting a lot of calls right now uh, because. It's, I, I don't know, I get it on Facebook. I know people get it on Instagram or Twitter. They're advertising quite heavily. We are not at that stage right now. Uh, so most people will not have heard of us. We're kind of only in the endorsement stage because we're kind of staying out of the way of 68. And also we are five months, I guess, six months from the ballot. So there's not a whole lot of value in campaigning at this stage. I have one question for Mr. Basso. I remember the um, Supreme Court case, I think it's the Salinas about advocacy for uh, uh, measures that an agency might take, that you could be factual about things, but you cannot be an advocate for things. And I'm wondering, I see all these where -ozes in here, they all look fairly factual to me, but the where the, the now therefore be it resolved clause says that the Board of Directors of Soquel Creek Water District formally supports Prop 68, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that language, kind of smells like advocacy to me, and so I'm wondering, is this even legal for us to do? While your general counsel is looking, I've run into this actually with a number of agencies. Um, you are barred from advertising anything about this on your website, obviously from any uh, fiscal contributions, um, but I, ca I can't say what the actual agency's uh, regulation guidelines say, but water agencies, um, aren't affected by that Supreme Court decision in terms of advocating for proposition measures. I, I don't think this violates that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not, this is simply an endorsement and it isn't putting anything out there and other beyond that. Okay. Anyone in the public wish to address us on this item? 
Seeing no one. So, what are we doing? I think it, I think it makes sense for us to be behind it. I clearly, it would benefit the well, district probably. Yes, so I mean. Well, that, I remember that's observing endorsements by state state agency on Prop One. I mean, I've seen that in the past. This yeah. sample resolution, Aqua has is sent out to all its member agencies. But so then Aqua is not a government institution, so they could they could advocate for anything they want. Right. No, they. Yeah. I mean, this was out of toolkit for water agencies to use, not not a one that Aqua's signed. But yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll make the motion that we proceed with with, with endorsing it. And I second it. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director Lather. Yes. Director LaHue. Yes. Director Jaffe. Yes. Director Christensen. Yes. President Daniel. Yes. All right. Okay. Can only okay. help our customers. <laughs> All right. It would. Thank you. Thank Mateo. you. Thank you. Okay, 6.4, approved scope of work addendum for professional consultant services with Brown and Caldwell. Great, Shelley, if you can switch the presentation over here. Uh, okay, got it. It's on. Is that me? I just have a couple slides to kind of introduce this item and then, of course, open it up for discussion with the board. Um, but the item before us tonight is, is to do a scope amendment for Brown and Caldwell, who has been our technical advisor for the Pure Water Soquel project. Uh, last month, we came to the board uh, to introduce uh, that the scope with Brown and Caldwell be expanded to include efforts related to the community water plan. And this slide is just saying, you know, since 2006, we recognize that the board has been working diligently on an integrated resources plan to diversify our sole groundwater to include many other components um, that has now evolved to the community water plan and for supply options. So uh, just highlighting in the, that blue area, you know, 2018 and 2019, we foresee that, you know, in the last five years, we've done a lot of efforts on our water supply options reevaluation to complete the technical, environmental, and financial studies on Pure Water Soquel. That's the, you know, as you guys know, the district's lead agency project. All the other projects that we are considering, we aren't the lead agency on. So a lot of the efforts that we're working on right now it will be culminating in this, these next two years to tee up for that the board can make some decisions on what supply options they want to pursue within that community water plan. One of the big drivers that we also tee up as we complete all of those studies is really pursuing uh, grants. And just, you know, I think Mateo did a great job, almost teed it up better than I could. Um, Prop 1 money that was passed in 2014 is either long gone, like with the recycled water, component or there wasn't enough to fund things which is why they're going out again we've have an opportunity with the prop one groundwater grant which was an 800 million dollar pot of money um, that that we qualify for because of our seawater intrusion problem we have here so um, we have done a great effort in in going for the planning grant the two million dollar planning grant and there is an opportunity for us to apply for this next round, which is round two, for implementation dollars. So uh, with that in mind, that's really kind of driving us in, in terms of the schedule. But really, I think the schedule really kind of backs up from the two at the bottom, which is you know the board set a goal to have sustainable water supply online in 2020, 20, 2022 with the ultimate goal of meeting that state law and that state mandate to uh, restore the basin and be sustainable. So in terms of the supplemental water supply options and what we're doing, they're all at different levels of evaluation, different phases of planning, different lead agencies, different studies, but all of them need to have some sort of uh, information gathered that would support you know, the environmental efforts, the technical efforts, and the financial efforts. The environmental efforts have been underway for two years with ESA, and we are looking towards release of the draft EIR this summer. And the technical studies and the feasibility uh, evaluation has gone on a very parallel track uh, with the feasibility studies that we did with grant funding through the State Water Resources Control Board and the Bureau. 
Right now, the big push and the big emphasis is really to, to look deeper, look closer, and refine the financial aspects of the project. And that's really kind of what is feeding both the technical and the financial needs of our project right now within this task one effort that we have presented to the board tonight. Again, really, this is to help us continue that evaluation process so that the board and the community is ready for some decision making. Go ahead, Ron. Yeah, I'll just add, so to put this in a broader context um, and then a couple narrow things, uh, we brought a month ago uh, at the board meeting, we brought this, uh, a portion of this item to you uh, and you said, okay, do part A or part one, but bring back a needs assessment for the rest of it. Th well, this is the rest of it. The needs assessment's been conducted. Uh, we had one board member at least participate in that uh, as directed by the entire board. So we went and did that analysis and now we're, we're back saying, okay, this is, this is what we need. Um, and basically, uh, we're, we're juggling a lot of balls and we're gonna drop one or two if we don't get some additional support. Um, I'll give you an example. The Prop, w Prop 1 uh, grant money that we've got 1.5 million for, we thought we'd apply about a year later for that uh, implementation part. Well, they called us and said, y you better do it now. And maybe because money's running out and, and they support us in our, our project this. So now we're having to regroup and, and just that, that alone takes a lot of effort. So th that's just one example of several of the items going on. But in the larger context, this is really a lot of analysis, but it's, it's basically staff support is what it boils down to. Uh, people, some software, but really uh, uh, more horsepower behind what we, than what we already have. Under task one, what we foresee a lot of the efforts to include is you know, as, as cost assumptions. We have cost assumptions that were already placed in to the board approved 10 year financial plan of 2015. Raftelis is updating that effort. They've asked for information from the water supply options, Pure Water Soquel, as well as stormwater capture, deep water desal, or any type of water transfer purchase that we assume may occur within the 10 years. So. Uh, we'll be working on updating some of the, that information, not just to what we have currently. Uh, some of the dollar amounts that we have were estimated back in 2015. Pure Water Soquel was done in 2017. For the 10-year finance plan, and really more importantly for us in terms of trying to chase some grant money, um, we're looking at projecting those costs out to a midpoint of construction so that we have the correct ask or the correct cost estimate of what we're looking for when we're requesting grant money. So near term, Leslie and Raftelis need some information on the community water plan components in the Pure Water Soquel project by September of 2018. And then there's several opportunities for us with the grant applications and they're listed there on the screen. The Prop 1 grant, we would need this information by October. Title 16, which is the federal pot of money, um, that's always tied to the federal budget, but we're foreseeing the end of 2018. And then, of course, the WIFI loan through the EPA and the SRF low interest loans, we will be looking towards getting that those low interest loans to um, collaborate and complement any type of grant money we get. The task two, like what Ron said, uh, we did go back after we got direction from the board to do a needs assessment and we conducted that on, on April 30th. The highlights from that, and I think the priority is we just really need to augment staff and have some support from a, a consultant to do some of the things that we need to do and we'd like to do. Again, we, we really feel that we've been doing a good job at monitoring and kind of keeping up to date with all of these community water plan supply options, but, but we need and we think it's important to create the master schedule. Um, more importantly, we need to really kind of track the progress and the development because there are so many different items that are going in parallel. They have different timing elements, different reliability, different source waters, different volumes of water supply that would be available to the district. Um, and that all equates to time, money, and cost. And then of course with that uh, planning grant that we received through Prop 1, 
um, we are required to monitor and track, and that's a $2 million grant. So there are a lot of requirements that we need to, uh, to meet and support with documentation that we just are very limited on. And then, of course, you know, I think for all of us, um, this type of lift for a project of our size at this point, we should establish some good quality, uh, qual quality control measures in our documentation to make sure that we can perform our tasks accurately and currently, especially with all these balls that, that Ron mentioned. I just have one slide here. What we're looking at uh, for right now, oops, sorry. What we're looking at right now with this scope amendment is just to help the district in terms of some program support and staff augmentation through next year. Um, obviously, the lift for project management and program management is technically anywhere between 10 and 28 percent of a total project cost. So um, as you can see, the city of Santa Cruz just in 2017, um, they realized that they had a $200 million CIP project. They hired HDR, which is a uh, engineering firm to help them with program management. Uh, in February, they brought to their water commission three service orders, which totaled $3.2 million. This was in addition to another $500,000 that they had already approved for staff augmentation. This slide on the bottom does illustrate kind of what they are looking at in terms of their program management for, for their efforts, and they have a lot of the same things that we're looking at. Um, looking at creation of annual budgets, uh, creation of a schedule, looking at asset management, developing document and contract management with GIS support, decision making, risk, invoicing, and uh, project performance and reporting. Why, why this was important to the city, I think are the same exact things that are important to us, and I and they think they support what we've heard from, from, from our board is, you know, the challenges that we have uh, is timing of cash flow. You know, we're a small agency where this, these projects and programs are going to come up in tandem with uh, Taj's engineering CIP program um, is important for us so that Leslie can plan correctly. Uh, there are implications to financing, especially with our grants and, and loans. And there is um, decisions that we could uh, include within this that would be delivery model options or delivery methods. So this is something that we're looking at and doing just for this next two years. If the board were to go forward with a component full-fledged in terms of implementation, we are looking at project management costs to be around $15 million. And that's already been planned for when we talk about the Pure Water SoCal project being $70 million. That includes $15 million in engineering, project management, construction management, and design. So, you know, in summary, I, I think I've already hit on a lot of these um, things, but the work that we're asking Brown and Caldwell to do will help us support the financial analysis that are needed right now. Um, they're going to help augment the staff so that we can continue to uh, move forward with uh, what's important to the board in terms of identifying that that goal of trying to achieve a water supply project to be online in 2022. And we're in a nice position with uh, the Prop 1 planning grant in that these are tasks that we've identified in our scope that's with that grant, so half of it will be funded through grant funding. I could add one, just one thing that I think may help complement what Melanie said. So you saw Santa Cruz, I mean, s is spending a lot more money on the project management. We too may have to do that as we move forward, but what we're trying to do here is a baby step just to get us up to the next stage so we can peer over the horizon a little bit more. And a question that was asked last time that we did take to heart and discuss a little bit was, well, why not just hire another staff member? That may be necessary in the future. We're, we're always reluctant to do that uh, just because we're physically conservative. But the other thing a consultant brings, and having been a consultant half my life, I mean, they bring a, a, a deep bench that you you just can't get with one person. Some of the uh, support we're looking at is down here, but it's also some of it's up here. It's almost guidance for us. They've been down the road before and no little um, uh, methods that really can help a lot. I could give you an example or two, but I'll leave it at that. I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but 
Um, also, the city of Santa Cruz engineering department, water engineering department has 15 plus employees, mm -hmm. and yet they still need to go out. We've got a fraction of that here. So we're really coming to the board asking for assistance to get this program to, success, to succeed. Okay. I mean, it sounds like, you know, to take advantage of the funds we've already gotten for a grant and also to be in a position to move forward with getting funding and being ready for that. So, so that we're not missing any opportunities in timing as well. Any questions of staff? I have a question on the on the actual okay. attachment. Okay. Um, where it's program management under activities on page 60 of 89. Um, it's really the first page of the attachment. Um, one. Under activities, the second bullet under an analyze water availability under each portfolio option. Um, not just water availability, but I, don't we need to evaluate the concepts of timeliness, reliability, effect on climate change and drought? So yeah, and quality. So I just, I would want, yeah, and quality. I, I would want that in there. Okay. Aren't a lot of those things in our feasibility studies, though? Um. We had a feasibility study for Pure Water Soquel, and then Kennedy Jenks did a uh, this type of evaluation criteria-based analysis on water supply options, those have greatly changed. So that would be part of this is just to kind of do that kind of um, qualitative analysis on the current community water plan components. So kind of redo the feasibility analysis for all these then? It wouldn't be uh, redoing it in its entirety more qualitatively, looking at just, you know, we wouldn't be going through really a, a thorough analysis. We would take what we've already done with Pure Water Soquel, and we would uh, do, I think, basically capture what you've been doing with stormwater capture and an update on the river water transfer. The river water transfer feasibility study that we had um, in the development of the community water plan is does not even look like what um, the city is looking at in their water supply advisory committee or what is being pursued in this water purchase transfer that was based on the Prop 50 conjunctive use system that was what the costs were based on okay. well I have a qu question myself if you're I'm done yes that? okay um, this task one is is entitled program management assistance for the community water plans portfolio diversification analysis and rate study input and then that's on page 60 as well and then I flip to page 61 under assumptions it says BC Brown and Caldwell We'll use the cost analysis from previous studies as the basis for developing portfolio options for Pure Water Soquel. Class 4 level cost estimates from the 2017 feasibility studies will be used for other options. Class 5 level cost estimates from the 2014 will be used. Analysis will be formed based on the most current information available. Blah, blah, blah. And so I'm wondering, you know, why do this study if they're just going to take the current estimates for costs and feed them back to us? I mean, that doesn't seem very useful. Um, so. There, I think um, if we focus on that last sentence that says, you know, they're going to be based on the most current information available, a lot of the things have changed over the last four years. So we'll need to update that. It's I, I think BC is not going to go through and develop a full class five estimate. Mm -hmm. um, that That's a heavy lift. That's probably doubling this effort. Yes. Um, what they are going to do is look and see how much has changed, what does need it is, and, and go through that level of effort. I think for the board, and this is why one of the things that we talked about, a lot of task one um, includes, you know, development of these portfolio options up to six. Do we need six? Maybe we don't need six. Um, what are they? Those options. six portfolio, we, we haven't defined them. One of the things that when we asked Brown and Caldwell to develop this is we didn't want to just assume what those portfolio options could be in kind of a silo between staff and uh, BC. We wanted to try to incorporate um, either a committee that the board set or utilize the, uh, what is it called, water infrastructure, uh, okay. sub water infrastructure standing, standing committee, mm -hmm. and look at those. So. For example, uh, we know, and I think we've talked about with the board, 
the deep water desal or pure water soquel, that's not an and, that's an or. So one option could be deep water desal. One option could be uh, pure water soquel. One option could be pure water soquel with uh, river water transfer. So those are the kinds of things that we wanted to kind of work on together. And the, the way that a consultant agreement typically is done, uh, which is very different than a contractor, is um, we, 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 put it, we put a scope together, we say up to, and then it's billable. And so for a lot of our, our contracts, we, do we don't e meet that or we exceed that where we have to come back. This is, we put this in, we will spend what is needed based on that kind of iterative process, but it gets us, us going, especially because we're trying to meet those uh, fall deadlines that are required by some of these other tasks. Okay. Yeah, and just to, to follow up on that as I look at the scope here, um, one of those things that where all the money may not be spent and m certainly wouldn't be charged, as we go over those bills quite thoroughly, is um, in task one it says BC anticipates a total of eight meetings or workshops for this task. And I think what we were envisioning were, w was uh, the board would give m me the authority to, to work with two directors and a group of staff and, and uh, consultants. and develop some of this. Now, you may say, we don't need eight, and that's fine. We'll take it. We just wanted to give the board the opportunity to have as much participation. We always appreciate that. Uh, there are some, b you know, big decisions along the way, but we certainly can do that and report back and reduce some of those as, as we go along. Um, those are the kind of things we, we look for and we're, we're aware of. We just didn't want to shortchange it and have to come back again. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone from the public wish to talk about this item. Okay, seeing no one. Um, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, I, I had concerns about task number two, um, but you know, it's good to finally see the needs analysis, which was what we agreed to last time this came to us. It's a shame that that wasn't in the report, but now that I see it, I can support that. And I mean, I, I, I feel like we have to have confidence that the general manager and staff are gonna utilize them as much as they need to get the task accomplished and no more, you know? And so um, that's where I'm at. And they, we, all, we all are working towards the same goal. And it sounds like pretty strongly they, they need this help to move forward. So I'll make both motions. I second. Okay, we have no motion and second. Roll call. Director Lather. I'm gonna from this. I believe I have a conflict of interest. Director LaHue? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. <coughs> yes. President Daniels? I just can't support it. I have to vote no. But it passes. Thank you. All right. So I think we move on next to 6.5 consideration approval for the district to join other organizations. Yes, find my notes here. Yeah, so, you know, the district already belongs to several professional organizations. Um, I mean, Aqua alone is like 22,000, 25,000, something like that dollars per year, but it does provide a lot of value. We were just up there last week, I believe, meeting, the conferences, uh, legal counsel reported out. We met with the Bureau of Reclamation and whatnot. Um, so there's a list of those agencies that help with water and what I like to say administration, such as California Special District uh, Association. But what we don't have on the list are more community-oriented organizations. And Shelly, you can actually go to the li yeah that list. And because getting any kind of water, so, uh, additional water supply is really in some ways involves uh, different uh, agencies within the community. I mean, certainly the, the business community has an interest from um, their point of view, whether it's a restaurant, not having to cut back, or uh, somebody developing a house. Uh, the, the, let's see, surf riders up there, they may be interested in the uh, Pure Water Soquel project since it uh, diverts 25% of the, um, 
a secondary water that of eight million gallons a day that now goes out to the ocean. So uh, forming relationships with these agencies, joining their membership uh, potentially may have value to the uh, district. I know I attend already some of the, like the chamber meetings and uh, I pay a little bit extra. So I think it's just five bucks per meeting because we're not members and they're asking, you know, they, they already let me usually present on what's important in the world of water but you know they would like us to join show support for their efforts so that's it in a nutshell and what the what the motion really is about is um to uh, uh give permission to uh direct staff to budget for joining these organizations i think the total is right around seven or eight thousand dollars um seven thousand two hundred ninety five and but then to uh, not just wholesalely join all these agencies, but uh, direct the general manager to work with the board president and vice president to then as uh, I meet with these different agencies, see if the, the value is truly there. We give a, a couple line items to what the potential value is. So um, we think it'd be um, valuable to the district and our customers and help us a further attainment of a supplemental water supply. Any questions of staff? So this is new concept for me. So why is it necessary to join an agency to interact with them? It's, it's I'm not, not an agency, yeah, it's an organization. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not absolutely necessary. I mean, we go and um, talk to most of these agencies, or, or organizations, I should say, already. Um, I think it shows a little bit more of a relationship level it's another it's another level i guess is the way i would put it versus um me just attending their meetings um uh and they go well the district's not really in it but the, the general manager cares about it and then we wanted to balance it with the environment some of the environmental organizations against kind of the business side because uh, on the flip side, you know, we're environmental stewards, too, and, uh, you know, one is Coastal Watershed Council. Uh, Director, Director Daniels uh, actually asked about that one, and I, and I thought maybe that one should be removed. And I thought, well, if we're looking at river water, they may play a role. They may not, because they're really focused on the, on the downstream portion of the San Lorenzo. So I, I'm not sure. First local or local first, I, I said, why is that on the list? And Melanie said, well, they're all about local, we're local water. That may be a little bit more of a reach, but I didn't scratch it off the list because of that. But it's really to forge a little bit stronger relationships. Yeah. Any other questions? I, I would just add there are a couple organizations that have events, and if you're a member, you can throw those events, and if you're not a member, you can't. Um, we would love to have some events um, where people come and have their meetings in within our learning center. Yeah, and we invite, and on the flip, we invite people to come, and if we're members, uh, then they're more likely to come. It's, it's always nice, that synergy. A couple of the a a uh, agencies have been, um, they've, they've come anyway, but I'm not sure how much longer we can continue to do that on, s on some situations. Anything else? Well, is it, or how would you go about it? You're going to, this is a proposed list, and then you're going to reevaluate it, or? Well, what I envision, and I'm certainly open to, um, we're open to suggestions, but the, the overriding concept that is that, um, you know, it's a way to foster stronger community st stakeholdership and relationships, but I, I would probably meet with each organization say hey we're interested in this do you think it's a value and then report back to the board president and vice president give my assessment and see how that that synergy energy fits and whether we think it's uh, worthwhile to our, our customers to to oh, join i also think it's uh, can you guys hear me yes, yes. <laughs> it's really good to network and to find out real, you know, what's going on in the community and present our own you know, side of whatever the issues are in a way that's networking rather than you know, sending out flyers. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, and l let me add to that. Thank you, Director Lather. Uh, so a good example, you would think the Santa Cruz Chamber of Commerce, what, why would we want to, how would that benefit? Well through relationships, actually, I think Melanie forged a while back, they've started inviting us to some of their um, 
subcommittee meetings and it's it's enlightening because there's a host of people there that are really you know whether it's Cabrillo or the college but they get to hear you know our update our side of uh, our perspective and that sort of thing even though it may only take take place for a minute or two I think there's this value in that sort of thing well I'm really all for uh, the community outreach to some of these I wonder whether we belong in them they are they really directly a, a fit but I uh, but I expect that that will be reviewed we'll be co we'll call it a little bit I would think right right yeah, it's it's yet to be determined to follow these, and that's why we're not asking for a you know carte blanche. Let's do it. We don't, we don't even believe that that's right, but um, I suspect some, you know, will probably make the list, and maybe if you won't. I have a question about the Resource Conservation District. Isn't that kind of a quasi governmental agency? It is. It, it is. It's it's it is with I the county. It's, a, it's an elected it position, I think. So it's. They're, they're funded like by they call those donations pardon they, they call them donations versus membership so if we wanted to donate yeah, yeah. Well, I think their members are appointed by the county so it's yeah so that may not work that's what that I'm reason. wondering yeah may not work yeah that, that, that may one, that may I'm um, not sure that one fits they yeah. are in interested I think that you know environmental protection that's why that one was on the list understood we'll their that. focus yeah. but mm -hmm. yeah so it's not a lot of money that we're talking about here right. so i would support it with the uh, with the acid test of only being a member if it's a if there's a benefit that does that we would uh reap that we can't get with not being a member right and so i i think um to what you'd be doing is putting your faith unless you designate uh two other people but the board president and vice president from when I come back and say here's here's my evaluation and really they get to you know they can make the call let's see if what the public has to say if anything anyone wish to address us on this item see no one okay and it doesn't have to be the president and vice president no, if one anything. of you guys are interested in reviewing these uh, I'm fine with you guys but I think it is it is important to pick ones that have value for us yeah I, I feel like I have to justify each choice to the customers mm -hmm. and know. maybe even go and talk to each group beforehand or right or you know, the leaders of the group or something mm -hmm. so given that and, and that the uh, motion is motion one is uh, Fairly general, I'll make a motion to approve this. I'm trying to decide on the second one. Well, I'll go for the second one too. I'll make a motion for one and two. One and two, okay. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for, or actually both motions, first and second. Roll call, please. Director Lather? Yes. Director LaHue? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniels? Yes. Okay, item 6.6, .6, the resolution to consolidate the election. Yeah, this is just an item really to save our ratepayers uh, money where you piggyback on the November election versus doing a solitary election. So it seems to make sense you've done it in the past. And I, I'd just like to give a nod to Karen. She actually uh, wrote this memo. I came in one day and there was I was going to write it and there it was in my box. So thank you, Karen, for doing that. Um, this is just, As always. This is, <laughs> yes, thank you, Karen. And th this is one of those things that we've done yeah. every time yeah historically this it's kind of standard makes, operating makes sense procedure. as long as i've been on the board yeah mm -hmm. the chances of a tie are so low yes to spend the money if if it did happen runoff right. elections are super expensive yes uh, well i'll public make the motion com public comment oh yes public comment no one okay um i'll second all right <laughs> motion to second roll call please director lather Director LaHue? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. President yes. We go on to item 6.7, Water Demand Offset Program, New Applicant Offset Generating Project Proposal. Melissa Abbey, our staff analyst, is going to be giving a summary on this, and we have a lot of members of 
um, Interlight Church here tonight, as well as Oakmont Senior Living, and they plan to uh, come up and talk as well. Thank you for your patience. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Tonight we have an applicant proposed offset generating project for the board's consideration. This application was submitted by Oakmont Senior Living, um, who's currently in escrow to buy Inner Light Ministries Church on Soquel Drive and convert it to a senior living facility with 85 living units. Uh, this project is currently number 35 on the wait list to purchase offsets with an offset requirement of 9.26 acre feet. There are currently two ways in which new development projects offset their demand. Half of their offset requirement, which would be 4.63 acre feet in this case, can be fulfilled by purchasing offset credits from the district at a cost of $55,000 per acre foot. These funds go towards long-term conservation projects. The other half um, of the offset requirement must be met either through residential toilet replacements or by an alternative project proposed by the applicant and approved by the board, which would save water um, at other places in the district. Um, as is, Oakmont's proposed project would, would require 772 residential toilets to be replaced to meet one half of their requirement. So instead of residential toilets, uh, Oakmont is proposing an alternative project in which they replace um, older, less efficient toilets, faucets, and shower heads in um, hotel and condo tell uh, rooms in Seascape Resort uh, with low flow, um, low water use fixtures. The commercial toilet replacements, um, they're essentially an extension of the existing WDO residential toilet replacement program, which we have right now, um, because they do replace 1.6 gallon per flush fixtures with an ultra high efficiency toilet. The exact fixtures which are being replaced are shown in the applicant's um, application uh, as attachment one, but there is a summary of the replacements in the first table um, on the memo. Each retrof retrofit does go beyond the requirements for new construction, which is found in our water use efficiency requirements and um, the California Green Building Code. And the proposed toilets meet our recommendation for lowest flush volume of 1.0 gallon per flush for commercial toilets. The applicant used a consultant to uh, calculate the water savings for this project and came up with a water savings of 18.16 acre feet. We have reviewed the sources that they used, um, the assumptions that were made in their calculations, and um, we feel that they are realistic um, except for the changes that are needed to address the permanents, which I'll get to in just a minute. Uh, the calculations account for a 50% occupancy rate and an average of 2.63 guests per dwelling, which were figures that were provided directly from representatives at the resort. To address the issue of faucets and shower heads not lasting 20 years, as is required by the, our project criteria, uh, we discounted the calculations that the applicant made we recalculated the proposed kitchen faucets and bathroom faucets to account for a 10 year lifespan and recalculated the savings for shower heads to account for a five year lifespan. Given those revisions, we have a revised estimate for savings, which is 9.06 acre feet. Uh, permanence is only one of the criteria which the board considers when judging applicants. The other two criteria are additionality so whether or not the savings would have occurred otherwise, and measurability, so how well the savings can be quantified. Since the savings achieved by plumbing retrofits are very quantifiable and reliable, we think that the project meets the requirement for measurability. Um, to address the criteria of additionality, the applicant did obtain a letter from the general manager at Seascape Resort, which states that the resort was not planning on uh, doing replacements to this level um, without the help from, from Oakmont. Um, in addition, these retrofits do go beyond the green building code, our water use efficiency requirements, and the toilet replacement goes beyond 
our uh, normal commercial toilet rebate. Um, also, staff does not expect that the green building code will further lower the efficiency requirements for toilets in the future, particularly in commercial settings, um, nor are the state point of sale regulations for toilets expected to become more stringent. So um, that kind of wraps up my overview of the project, but we do have some um, representatives here. We have Hannah Darty, which is the project manager for Oakmont Senior Living, um, and she's going to give a brief overview of their project, and then either um, she or I can answer any questions. Before we do that, mm -hmm. any questions of staff? Okay, seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, President Daniels and members of the board. My name is Hannah Darty. I am a project manager for Oakmont Senior Living. Um, Oakmont Senior Living is a family-owned development, construction, and management company. Um, we're located a couple hours north of here in Sonoma County, in the town of Windsor. Uh, we have over 25 years of experience uh, building and managing senior-focused communities throughout the state of California. Um, we're currently working with uh, Reverend Deborah Johnson and Interlight Ministries um, to purchase their property on SoCal Drive, and we would like to build an 85-unit assisted living community on that site, as Alyssa just mentioned. Um, we've been looking in the Santa Cruz area for quite some time. Um, it's a beautiful community we'd really like to be a part of. We feel that this is an ideal location for a building such as ours, and um, we think it'll provide an excellent option for Santa Cruz County seniors who are in need of care. We've uh, been through many versions <laughs> of the program that, you, uh, that is presented to you this evening. We feel that this one maximizes um, efficiency and clearly shows that we are willing to go above and beyond um, regarding saving water for our proposed community. Um, as you can see, and Alyssa had mentioned as well, um, on page 79 of the staff report, we used uh, sources that were recommended by district staff. We used uh, an uh, estimate provided by Seascape for guest averages, as well as a conservative 50% occupancy rate to make sure that the uh, calculations were based on actual and real information. Uh, the program also meets the board's criteria for additionality and measurability. When we realized that an offset program would be necessary, our real estate representative, Candy Wood, approached Seascape with the offer that, as part of an offset program, Oakmont and Interlight would bear the cost of upgrading their very outdated fixtures with ones that go above and beyond current standards. As Alyssa also said, um, being that we're updating old fixtures with new fixtures, it's a very easy way to measure the savings that will be produced. We felt that the requirement of permanence was met. Um, the current fixtures at Seascape are very dated and very old, and we could see that we felt that they would be there for the next 20 years, but I do understand that staff has some precautions on this matter. We very much want to become part of the so-called community. We both understand and respect the concerns regarding water and the aquifer, which is why we presented a program this evening that like I said, goes above and beyond what is required, which is that 4.63 acre feet. As Alyssa mentioned as well, the measure, you know, the original savings we had calculated were 18.16 acre feet per year, but staff has been incredibly helpful and we'll definitely look to them for guidance on the suitability of this program. So the 9.06 acre feet saved makes sense to us as far as permanence goes. They have obviously much more expertise in that matter. Um, so even with staff's recommendation, the program saves almost double what is required. We believe it's an excellent solution that provides an opportunity for us to construct and run an assisted living community in SoQuell, but that will not have a negative effect on the water district or the aquifer. So that's the end of my presentation, and we're uh, available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Any questions? Well, what are the fixtures did the 85 the senior living center but will will you be doing the same fixtures in this the senior living center we uh we have not gotten that far <laughs> we have a very a uh, rough site plan right now uh but we would be meeting you know the current requirements for the district i i can't speak to that but 
we have a number of steps. There's a you know, go green, go yeah. go, go platinum, and each one re reduces the amount you have to offset. Yeah, and let me just throw it in there too that that um, 9.26, which is their um, offset that we've calculated, that's um, without any go green measures. So if they do elect okay. to do any of those, um, that would come off of that number. And may I ask, Alyssa, is that also with the multiplier in there? Yes. Okay. okay. Like, and we, we could double what we they could potentially really require go green. You could. I mean, I'll just point okay. out that it the number that they're offsetting it as it per our regulations is, is twice what is really anticipated to be used. And then you could naturally require or entertain or, or direct staff to work with uh, these folks on um, um, going green, greener. And, and the fixtures that are currently at Seascape are probably at least 20 years old now? At least. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's about, it was in the 90s. I don't remember what year, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty old. <laughs> Yeah. Well, There's a lot of leaks there, too. Yep. Not only do these tiers save you offsets, but they also save water. They're designed so that each tier uh, adds on top of the other and, and uses things that are you know, water efficient, I, in the which also program. save you mm -hmm. water rates that we would charge for the usage. Yeah. So it's a good idea to look at them Absolutely. seriously. And I had one other question. So um, in terms of the 35 being 35th on the list, though, is, does this size of this project, uh, is that the ju it's a justification to do this project and get the... It would take them forever. Well, they w uh, yeah, honestly, <laughs> I know that would be a <laughs> That's it pretty big list. No, I think... They keep going back on the list. Right. Round, and round, and round, half, round and round and round, yeah. Each half I, that's a good question. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons they, they went out, because per the program that uh, you... Lisa and Shelley design and that was brought to the board and approved. Uh, the max you can get when you purchase toilet, uh, you can purchase toilets, they're just going out and doing it direct and that is an avenue, is one acre foot, right? One acre foot? Half, half, half acre half foot, acre. half acre foot. So they'd have to get in line 20 times roughly, or 18. Yeah, okay, so that's, I, th I, I just wanted to make sure that the size, if the size and the scope of the project is part of that condition, it's enough of a condition to jump I guess, jump the list. Yeah, that's the, that's the benefit of the propose your own offset mm -hmm. project is to, is to bypass that meeting half of your offset through the toilet retrofits or toilet rebate program yeah. and the wait list. <coughs> yeah, so the program is, de is designed, uh, has an outlet to, to allow this to happen, people to be creative. It's, it's not a, um, a variance or anything like that. I just want to be clear. It is, no, it's has this built part in. Of the program. Yep, part of the program. Okay. Anybody else in the public? Or? Well, if no other questions, anyone from the audience wish to address us on this item? Seeing none, back to the board. I mean, to me, this seems reasonable. I mean, this is, it meets our criteria. It sounds like it's exactly what we had set up to. And, <coughs> and there's a lot of people going through Seascape Resort. So the water savings happen this summer as soon as, I mean, as soon as they get them in. Right. So, um, I, I'd make the motion to approve it. I'm going to second it, but I'm going to bring something up. So essentially, they've jumped the list 18 times by doing this big project. Um, and I, I'm very supportive of the water savings. But what's to keep somebody who's number 10 on the list to jump the list? They find a project. Yeah. Everyone's project. got the same option. Yeah, yeah and honestly. Can they, so they could go and find enough toilets somewhere and jump the list. Yep. Right, and, and that, I just want It's additionality, that's the, that's the thing. Right. It has to be yeah. additional, yes. So and the program allow, I mean, it's based on toilet rebates, a large portion of it right now. And I just want to be clear, um, jumping may not be the correct terminology because it's it's it, it is it's going outside as as Passing. bypassing as per the program allows to do that i just i don't want to be misleading right. so yeah. the the additionality is the is the only question in my mind it's obvious there's a lot of a lot of uh water savings that they're finding and it's no. i did i just don't the the additionality is yeah so the, it, the fact that this wouldn't be done otherwise mm -hmm. at this scale 
I think, meets that criteria. For mm -hmm. Well, it is. It, it, it seems additional to me because it's over and above what our re rebates apply to uh, commercial. Mm -hmm. And our current $300 per toilet 0 0.8 thing does not apply to commercial. So, mm -hmm. right. Sounds like it, it squeaks why, if nothing yeah. else. I mean, that's what we're hoping is people be creative and go out there and, and, and look. Yeah. And I think they were. And also, it also provides uh, more movement in the our list for smaller, you know, smaller households and things like that for smaller projects. Right. So that there's more movement there, so that those projects can get done too. So this, so I think the whole concept was good. I think that we should uh, approve this. Okay. One thing I would like to consider after this is directing staff to consider changing our commercial toilet rebate because if a commercial thing is out there and we'd like to move to a 0 0.8 or even a 1.0 uh, we should have a rebate for that mm -hmm. yeah somewhere in the memo it talked about not recommending below a 1.0 well then, then 1.0 so, so, so but right. yeah so but certainly that'd be something to look into yeah okay um i think we have a motion and a second roll call please director lather Yes. Director LaHue? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. President Daniel? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Item 6.8, proposal to restructure the WaterWise Garden Grant. Yes, yeah, so we've been taking a look at our grant programs and starting to take a look at, at some of our rebates and there'll be a, a follow-up uh, rebate item to this one. Um, we've had a garden grant program since around the year 2000, and it's really to um, encourage and f to fund and encourage innovative outdoor renovations um, with water-wise plants and drip irrigation. Um, and the grant's been limited to schools, public agencies, and nonprofits. And the maximum amount that we've granted over the years um, has been $2,000. We, in our current fiscal year, have $10,000 budgeted for the grant program, and we've only granted one this year. Um, over the course of the 18-year the program, only um, five grants have been awarded, which is uh, not a high level of participation, and so we're taking a look at, at ways that we can um, uh, incentivize the grant further and get more people to participate and in doing that we identified some barriers um, the first barrier is really the cost of these projects um, is pretty expensive um, it started around four to six dollars per square foot and now it's up to about ten dollars per square foot just for the landscape renovation and our grant um, requirements also um, call for signage, which can add significantly to the cost. So um, the, the grant award of $2,000 is certainly uh, a barrier to larger projects um, participating in this program. So that was one of the barriers we identified. Um, we uh, also feel like because um, of the of the cost um, tying it to a square footage might be better a better way to um, issue the grant and that's what we do for our long time turf um, rebate program which is up to a dollar per square foot and covers materials so we're really looking at at ways to incentivize the grant over the turf rebate program for those bigger projects because there's a real opportunity there for the education and outreach that goes along with it. Um, we're also um, seeing that the current grant only including materials as reimbursable expenses might also be a barrier and we're proposing to throw in um, costs such as landscape design irrigation system installation, and graphic design for signage, which can be expensive. Um, and to also include costs associated with purchasing and installing rainwater harvesting systems and stormwater management practices like uh, sink it, slow it, spread it, 
uh, get it into the ground through rain gardens and, and those sorts of measures. Um, the last change that we're proposing, well, there's a couple more, um, is really uh, not a barrier, but um, we, we have a good opportunity to tie the grant to another program that we've been um, promoting for a few years, and that's the Monterey Bay Friendly Landscaping Requirements. And so tying those things together and getting more awareness of that program out there is, is also a, a benefit of um, basing the grant eligibility on those same requirements for Monterey Bay Friendly Landscaping. And those are listed in the memo. And then lastly, um, we've heard and we recognize that the current grant application is pretty lengthy. It's 13 pages long and um, a lot of things um, could be simplified and streamlined and there might be an opportunity to get rid of a couple uh, requirements that are just at administrative and add a lot of time. So those are the changes that we're proposing. Um, we're asking that the grant amount um, be a maximum of $10,000 with no more than $10,000 being awarded in each fiscal year, which is what we've budgeted this year and what's proposed in next year's budget. So if we had, we could do two $5,000 grants if, if that's what came in, or we could do one $10,000, um, however they come in, um, when that money's expended, then there'll be no more grants issued that year. We're proposing to base the grant award on a maximum of $2 per square foot, again, to make it um, on par with, or create an additional incentive over and above the rebate. And to include the reimbursable costs um, that I mentioned, professional services, rainwater harvesting, and stormwater management practices, to base the eligibility on meeting the Monterey Bay friendly landscape requirements and uh, directing staff to make changes to streamline the application. Any questions of staff? Yeah. Mr. Yeah, I, yeah. so if somebody comes in for with a ten thousand dollar application, you know, the first day of the year. Mm -hmm. So that precludes any other applications for the rest of the year. Is that that what you're proposing? That's what we're proposing. And, and I, of course, I would staff can always come to us for. So you could come to yeah. us. So oh we, yeah, we would then, come to and you and for you approval. To we have to approve all of them anyway. We have to approve all of them anyway, right? So. Yep. Um, Okay, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea to, 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 to expand it. Yeah, I mean, we just, um, the grant we just awarded to SoCal High School, for example, for the landscape renovation they did last weekend, they had originally intended to do the majority of that traffic island, but fund because of the funding being limited to $2,000, um, they weren't able to, to do the whole thing, so. Gotcha. Um, that's kind of an example of, yeah, of the limitations. Number. So can they come back? They can. They can come kind of back for a second grant, yep. Um, I had just one idea, and I, you can throw it out if you want, just whether, just as a baby step, do we mm -hmm. maybe limit each grant to 5,000 so there's a chance for two in a year? I don't know. Or maybe we could decide on a case-by-case -case basis. But I have one question. I know a lot of the grants we get have matching fund requirements. Mm -hmm. I'd, I would be a little upset if someone, some organization decided they want to put in a garden and they came to us for $10,000 to put in a $10,000 garden and they didn't put anything to it themselves and just kind of use us as a funder for their garden. Um, so I think having some skin in the game is a good idea. Mm -hmm. So sure. well, to decide on the ratio, but uh, I mean, typically it's two to one for the things we get. Yeah, but the, it could be labor. It, you know, right. It could be, it, could be labor in the case yeah. of students. Yeah. I would have a grant that. proposal, so I think that's how it would be evaluated. I yeah. May, maybe, you know, I don't want to have, I don't think it's necessary to put a set number on it, but it could just make them aware that's one of the criteria that we will evaluate based on. And we can, but I, I agree, we don't want it to be misused. Right. Yeah. All, um, I guess we should have public comment. We should. Anyone wish to address us on this item? Seeing none, back to us. 
Well, I'd, I'd like to make the motions one through five. Okay. Which is essentially everything that the staff has asked for. Mm -hmm. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director Lather? Yes. Director LaHue? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. Yes. And we roar along to item 6.9. <laughs> Restructure the gray water rebate. Okay, so we've uh, had a gray water rebate for a number of years and um, I think I had some statistics in here about how many we've, we've given um, every year, um, but it hasn't been significant and so we've been scratching our heads and wondering why more people aren't taking advantage of this. Um, and really, again, I think it boils down to the cost of implementing this conservation measure um, is pretty expensive, even for the, um, the version that doesn't require a building permit. The laundry to landscape systems can range from $400 to $800. Um, and at a rebate amount of, of a current rebate amount of $150, um, that's not covering very much of the applicant's cost. And so we're thinking um, if we, in, we break out the gray water rebate into two types, recognizing that laundry to landscape has a lower cost than the branch drain system, such as connecting your showers and your bathroom sinks, um, breaking those out and giving a higher rebate amount for the branched drain systems, which require building permits and plans to be drawn up, um, so a lot more expensive. Um, and then increasing the amounts of both of the rebates. So for the laundry to landscape, we're proposing um, increasing that to uh, $400, I believe. Let me see here. And going for the branch drain systems um, up to $1,000 per household, not per connection, but per household. And we think that that might um, help incentivize and, and get more people to take us up on that. And um, we've heard from some uh, landscape contractors and consultants that install these systems that um, cost is a really limiting uh, factor or barrier. We are also proposing, um, like we did with the grant, um, to expand the coverage to include additional cost beyond materials, which is all we rebate now. So contractor performs labor, and if required um, for the branch drain systems, um, it is required, uh, the cost to secure building permits and install backflow protection because those are pretty substantial costs. I think building permits are about $370 and I think to install a backflow it can be up to $1,000 and then you have to have the annual testing done. So um, that's another um, proposed change and then lastly um, we've heard from landscape contractors and customers that the pre-inspection and post-inspection uh, requirement that we call for um, can be a barrier too because they have to take time off from work to have us come out two times in addition to having contractors come out and give them quotes and then you know being around when the work's scheduled to happen so um, what we're proposing there is to allow um, for contractor installed systems to allow those licensed contractors to sign off on a rebate application um, just like we do when we, um, we have plumbers uh, do toilet retrofits for a retrofit on sale or the direct install program um, under water demand offsets, we allow those plumbers using their professional certification and those contractors to sign off because they're held to meeting um, standards of, of their licensing. And in the case of um, uh, applicant installed. She's written on mute. Is Rochelle that should put on mute. <laughs> Rochelle, could you put yours on mute and then just put a ticket off when you need to speak? There's some background noise. 
And in the case where an applicant um, does their own laundry to landscape system, we're proposing to eliminate the pre-inspection but still follow up with the post-inspection to make sure that the system was installed according to the plumbing code and, and the county and city's requirements. So um, those are the, the motions. As a condition for the rebate. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Uh, yeah, I do. Are we, um, I noticed that the figures based on, the gray water figures are based on uh, 2001 data. Yeah, now. Are we really saving that much gray water anymore? We, um, we did uh, look at that. Vickers is kind of the, the Bible of water conservation. And even though it's an older source, um, there are two ways that they look at water use. There's kind of an average, and then there's a conserving home average. And we use the conserving home average. We also did take a look at the residential end use study, which was completed in 2014, which is a lot more recent. But that, again, is a nationwide, and it was actually higher than the 2001. So we did put an odd into there that this might be a little bit high, um, but it's really the best that we have to hang our hat on um, right now. And um, it, it didn't look too far off because they do a per capita um, in that uh, average conserving home. And so we, we multiplied that by two and a half people per home and then uh, separated out the gray water sources. So the amount of water per capita used for laundry, showers, and faucets. So I think it it's, might be a little high, but it's pretty good. Has staff ever investigated the status of ones that we've given rebates to in the past? Or? You know, are they still using them? And we have not. Okay. You know, you'll have to remind me, how many do we give out? I thought I, I, thought I had that in here. Um, let's see every here. Quarter we did we, put it there. Every quarter we have that data. A handful yeah. a year. Maybe. It's not very many. Yeah, it, let's see. Forget. I we've, um, since uh, 2012, so six years, we've done 24 gray water rebates, and they've all been for laundry to landscape systems, so it's only four about year. four per year on average. Mm -hmm. We right. set this r the current rebate or some reasonable fashion of it right when all this was happening. We participated on that, so it was just a kind of best shot and. I appreciate all that work. Yep. If there are no other questions, well, you know? I, I actually okay, have. please. So the the uh, fourteen thousand gallons per year is that is is that assuming uh, only the laundry, or is that no? That's that's all sources. So laundry, um, showers, and baths, that and bathroom a sinks. More expensive system then. Yeah. So how how does this compare in terms of say to a toilet rebate on, on, on how much we give versus how much is saved? We haven't done that um, breakdown. We, okay. we kind of moved away from that, I think, a little bit in our rebate program when we, um, we, we do have a lot of rebates where they're, ed they're serving an educational purpose and the amount of water saved is not really um, like the, the primary reason for the rebate. It, it's more of to uh, get people to take baby steps like the uh, down, uh, downwater uh, downspout redirect where people are taking their storm water and they're putting it into a rain garden. There's a real uh, difficulty in determining how much water is actually gonna get down into the groundwater basin. Um, same with rainwater, um, there's uh, not a lot of water saved per per dollar uh, rebated. Um, yeah. So we've kind of gotten away from that a little bit, um, and we haven't done that analysis for this so, rebate. So you see that the educational value of this is 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 great enough that it justifies the, the mm -hmm. level of rebate that you're mm -hmm. suggesting. Yeah, I mean, it, c it could range. I think it could be greater or less than, than equal to the toilet. But I think on these kind of things where people, everybody's used to replacing a toilet and it's easy to take advantage of that rebate or easier. 
a step to gray water needs a little extra nudge um, probably in general. So I think that's part of the thing. I, I've, I've had people ask me about this and saying they'd be willing to do it, but they don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Carrillo's, Carrillo's done yeah. classes. I know there's a class, yeah, but not and everybody and is. And there's a couple uh, outfits in town that kind of specialize in this. That I think we give them. We don't recommend people, but we do give a list and at their own risk. Yeah, yeah. we we plan to um, with whatever gets approved tonight. We plan to do some outreach around this to address the the Cabrillo classes, um, work with the instructor, and also work with the contractors in the area that you know do a lot of these systems or or um, you know are looking to do them more so. So. Okay. And I'm doing more outreach. That's all I had. Okay. Anyone from the audience? Seeing none. Personally, I don't think that this particular rebate is ever going to save very much. It's uh, quite a difficulty. I know we put one out, put one <laughs> in. I have to go out like every six months and put my hand down in the tank and pull out the, the greamy, you know, algae that's formed in there and <laughs> unplug the pipe and it's, and then we move the hose around all the time to all the different plants. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's labor intensive. It's labor intensive, yes. And but but I think it's it's kind of bragging rights that we support kind of every reasonable rebate there is, and that's a good thing. And if someone wants to really do one, like these 24 people over the last six years, it's good to support them. I wouldn't all? mind um, having reevaluating it after, I mean, sooner than, I mean, sure. fairly shortly to see whether there's any point to it. Yeah, because I looked into it myself for my house, too, and there were a lot of, I don't have the right kind of washing machine. And yeah, it and doesn't work you. for every household. Yeah, mm -hmm. and but as I the years go by, the, the washing machines that really save a lot of water are not going to be even in operation but that much. I mean, I think having the kind of help cover the cost of a contractor putting it in is going to help a little bit for some people because they won't want to be a do-it-yourselfer, um, mm -hmm. but they still have to maintain it. But um, I'll, okay. I'll make all five motions. And I'll second them with that proviso mm -hmm. of reevaluating re it. A after. year? Or uh, how at least two years at the latest, I guess. A couple years. We'll and under we'll add that to the motion with a reevaluation at two years. In two years? Two years. Yeah. Two years. And under discussion, I'd say that it, if you'd actually do this rigorously, it makes a big difference. Our water use is now flat, so that the winter and summer is pretty much the same. Mm. So basically, all of our outdoor irrigation, and we've also replaced all the grass with right. fairly drought tolerant things, but it's it's all using water that's already been used on the washing machine. So yeah. it's a good thing. It is. If you do it. So okay. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director Lather? Yes. Director LaHue? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniels? Oh, yes. And if, if I may just say, you know, when, when these three, the last three items all related to conservation came through a week ago and I was reviewing them for the board packet, um, you know, I told Shelly, I'm, it just reflects a can you know, uh, kind of a camaraderie of innovation, continuous improvement. I mean, look at this, they're taking the, re you know, they're not just sitting back there, they're thinking about how can they make it easier for our customers, what's gonna work better. And so, you know, you had three, you know, specific different projects brought to you tonight that I think were yeah. of that level. How can so we save more water. Yeah, so <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you for that. All right, we go to the last item, which is item 7.1, I communication to the board. No comment? I, I have a comment. Okay, please do. When I saw this, because whenever somebody suggests conflict of interest by, by uh, staff members, I, I look into it. And I looked into it and I recognized that Exedio, who is the uh, software consultant for the district, has been with the district for a long, long time, long before Ms. Reese came. And Ms. Reese has no financial connection to that business whatsoever. And the other item, which was a reference to Mr. DeFore, uh, having been an employee, was totally incorrect. It was, in fact, an endorsement of them as for, uh, providing services to public agencies. And others who have done that include Perrette Harmon, 
from Scotts Valley Water District and others. So this, this complaint is wrong on almost every score, and I think the board should know that and the public should know it. I think one of the other issues is that they don't have complete total discretion over their decisions. Like, you know, they have to go through our general manager to have these kinds of things approved. So um, the notion that ir illegalities is happening here is just false. So. But thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Good. I think then we're Thank done. You. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. See you two weeks. Three weeks, weeks from now. See you soon. Yeah.